This video is brought to you by Cool Green Clothing. We done gone worldwide and we coming straight out of Baltimore. Come on down, shop with us at 215 West Saratoga Street. And if you can't come and shop with us in person, go online right now at coolgreenclothing.com and make your purchase. Oh yeah, and by the way, if you ain't cool and getting the green, you're in the way, and that's just basic. I I. What's going on, YouTube fam? It's your boy Tony two times, and we back with another episode of the Baltimore Way, man. Before I start, be sure to tap that like button. Definitely watch this video to the end to hear the full story and all the details in the case. For the day one fam, y'all already know it's all love. Thanks for tuning back into another episode. If you're new to the channel and you're feeling the content, feel free to subscribe. Definitely hit that notification bell so you can be notified every time we drop a new video. Oh yeah, feel free to share the channel with your peoples. Everybody is welcome. Let's get right into the story. For most men, if we feel disrespected, feeling like somebody is cracking slick on us or playing, it's hard to just be the bigger person and walk away. It goes against a lot of things most of us was taught. Don't let nobody try you, be on go, and we take that same mentality and ego with us throughout life. When you are a young man, it's easy to get pumped up about petty things or minor altercation. But as we get older, we have more life experience, more to lose, people counting on us, and really shouldn't have to prove nothing to nobody. But for a lot of black men, no matter what age, it's always a stigma. You gotta be that guy, be aggressive, chest out, head up, no matter what's the situation, come out on top. We see it every day. I'm sure we all have experienced another brother mugging us in the grocery store or in traffic while you with your family. And you think to yourself, like what is yo looking at? Some people understand it's just a moment. Let it go, keep it moving. Because you gotta think for yourself and others out here just to make it home safe. But if you feed into your ego, your mind will tell you, check the situation, say something, show you how you coming. Everybody knows the smart thing to do, but it's a lot of men in the ground or in prison, all because of their ego and not being able to walk away. And that 30 seconds of anger can lead to years of regret. And on this episode of the Baltimore Way, we'll be discussing a case of a petty argument that took a turn for the worse. Back in 2023, 33 year old Terrence Cheatham was navigating life in Baltimore. The man who had served his country was now back home, raising his son and taking care of his mother. Also big on spending time with his family. Terrence was described as being a family leader and doting father who tried to stay out the way and do his own thing. On March 21st, 2023, it was a typical day in Baltimore. Terrence who lived in Randallstown, Baltimore County, had found himself on Emerson Avenue in the city's west side. He was driving around and had parked his car in the 2100 block. There was a lot of people outside and everything seemed calm until another man pulled up. At the time, 46-year-old Ricky Crenshaw. For whatever reasons, the two men would begin having words with each other, causing the young lady to do what's the normal nowadays, pull out her phone and start recording. After the brief exchange, it seemed like the day would go on. Ricky got into his car and pulled off, but seconds later, Multiple shots went off, hitting turns. 2.30 p.m. with multiple witnesses outside, somebody flagged down BPD, who came to the scene to find Terrence laying by his Chevy Equinox. He was rushed to a local hospital, but unfortunately, he wouldn't survive his injuries. Back on the scene, it was multiple people who saw the encounter, and a 16-year-old girl had the whole situation recorded, all the way up to the point of the shooting. This show Ricky pulled up in his Lincoln Town car and after the argument, banging a U-turn before shots went off. With that, BPD was able to use the tag reader technology to find the address of the vehicle's owner in which the car was registered to Ricky. After a few days, police caught up with the man coming out of his home in East Baltimore. He was taken in for questioning. At the time of his arrest, he had a ghost gun on him and he was wearing sweatpants with a stripe on the side a gold watch and pinky ring, which would all be brought up in interrogation. As the detectives told Ricky, the whole incident was recorded. They told the man they knew the shots was fired from his car. He kept his cool though. Even when they showed him a still picture, 
with the alleged shooter wearing the same pants, pinky ring, and watch he had on this day. Ricky still denied his involvement in the situation. With this information, he was taken into custody, charged with first degree murder and the ghost gun, in which ballistics came back showing that was the weapon used on Terrence. Terrence's family was left to grieve as everyone who witnessed the situation described it as a brief encounter between strangers. Some felt the man lost his life for nothing. While in custody, Ricky made a few calls, one to his homeboy, stating, yo, I need you. They trying to pin a body on me. I don't even know this guy, and plus me and you was playing the game and smoking all day. And what seemed like a solid alibi. But when Ricky's attorney reached out to his homie, he told him he wouldn't testify on his behalf and didn't want nothing to do with the situation. The one thing Ricky didn't know was the whole incident was recorded and the state's key witness would be a teenage girl. As the case started making its way to trial, the situation was painted by prosecutors that the two men didn't know each other at all. But Ricky took a small disagreement and made an emotional decision to take a life. Turner's family spoke out, letting him know the void he left in their lives, especially his son, who was 13 at the time. They showed family pictures and stated the man might not have been perfect, but he didn't deserve to go like that. As Ricky maintained his innocence, he was hoping his lawyer could bring up his alibi, smoking and playing a game with his homie. But prosecutors quickly noted the fact Ricky's homeboy didn't want nothing to do with the case, claiming if that was the case, he wouldn't have a problem helping an innocent man. But the nail in the coffin was the state's key witness, the teenage girl in a recorded video. As she took the stand and stated what she witnessed that day, an argument between the men and Ricky getting in his car like he was leaving before doubling back. As the suspect's clothing in the video was matched to what Ricky was wearing the day of his arrest, they showed it to the courtroom and there was nothing his lawyer could do. As the judge brought up his past convictions, the ghost gun, video, and the fact he wouldn't take accountability. Ricky was sentenced to life plus 37 years, found guilty on all charges and a case that was painted to as a shooting that was beyond comprehension. Rest in peace to Terrence. I send my prayers and condolences to his family. If these two men really didn't know each other, that's crazy that in our communities, a 30 second argument can end with two lives gone. Ricky was gone. He pulled off in his car. But like we talked about earlier, that ego not being able to walk away led to him turning around and the emotional decision left a 13 year old boy without a father. And him, at 47 years old, probably taking his last breaths in a jail cell. As men, we gotta learn to agree to disagree. We should know by now, everybody can pull the trigger. But at the end of the day, what is it really about? I often trip to myself, how we get tough with each other, but we'll get pulled over or go to jail and be on our best behavior. It says a lot about what's being instilled in us to look at each other as the enemy, instead of saying what's really going on. But hey, that's the Baltimore way. Yeah, man, crazy story. Rest in peace to Terrence. I definitely send my prayers and condolences to his family. But I ain't gonna talk too much more about this one. Y'all leave it in the comments. I appreciate you if you made it to the end. It's another episode of the Baltimore way. It's your boy Tony two times. Love, fam. I'm out.